So everyone, today we're going to talk about the turning effect of forces. So, what is a moment of a force? That would be the turning effect of a force or the ability of a force to make something turn. Basically, how well can you turn something? And that's the whole idea of this chapter actually. So, the moment of a force is also known as the torque to twist. So, can we calculate the moment of a force or can we calculate how hard we can turn something? The answer is yes we can a moment of a force is defined as the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot sounds like a mouthful but let's take a look whether we can simplify it so the formula is very simple the moment is equals to force times distance let's take a look at this picture over here okay basically imagine this triangle over here as a place where it turns okay and this imagine this to be a door that can go perhaps up this way or down this way so it can turn about that pivot now let's talk about where you put the force okay so imagine if you put a force over here at the end of the door so the force going up like this and the door would turn this the clockwise Okay, so the total moment, the total turning effect of what you're doing to the door right now is force, the amount of force you put into this point perpendicularly to the door and the distance from your point of your force to the pivot. The formula of this is moment is equals to force times distance. Okay, moment, the unit of moment is Newton meters and the unit of force is Newtons unit of distance is meters. Force times distance would get you the moment. The SI unit of the moment is a newton meter and the symbol is nm. And moment is a vector quantity which means it has both tilt and also direction. Only two directions of a force about a pivot which is either anti-clockwise or clockwise. So let's do this practice question. Calculate the moment about the pivot, pause the video here, and let's solve this. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the answer. The moment over here will be force times distance, the perpendicular force times the distance from the pivot. So, the perpendicular force would be 10 newtons, and this will be the pivot. So, the distance of the force from the pivot is 0 0.2 meters. Therefore, the moment will be 10 newtons times 0 0.2 meters giving you 2 newton meters and we can also label the direction here which is clockwise now we're going to use this in what we call the principle of moments and this is an extremely important thing to memorize actually when an object is in equilibrium the sum of clockwise moments about a pivot is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments about the same pivot. Basically, the word equilibrium means balanced. So, imagine this as a seesaw. Popular playground choice. The seesaw works when, when one person sits on one side and another person sits on the other side. Because of a roughly even distribution in weight, the two of them can take turns moving up and down the seesaw. In equilibrium though, imagine these, these two people want to be exactly balanced on the seesaw without going up or down. So, how do we achieve that? We only achieve that if the total anti-clockwise moments exactly equals to the total clockwise moments, which means the total anti-clockwise turning effects is equal to the total clockwise turning effects. And that's what this thing means. Taking moments about pivots, if you want these two things to be balanced, if, if you don't want this seesaw to start turning on one side, okay, the total anti-clockwise moments over here must be equal to the total clockwise moments over here. So, F1 times D1 is the total anti-clockwise moments, must be equal to F2 times D2, the total clockwise moments. Now, let's give it a try in the next example. Pause the video here and let's try to solve this. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the answer for this question. This diagram shows a uniform beam pivoted at A. What should be the value of D2 so that it is balanced, which means 
what length should this be in order to keep this at equilibrium? So, taking moments about the pivot over in the center, the sum of the anti-clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of the clockwise moments. The anti-clockwise moments are over here, which is the 5 Newton one. It pulls in this way, so it's going anti-clockwise. So, F1 times D1 or 5 Newtons times 0.4 meters. And then over here we have the clockwise moments or F2 and D2. So the clockwise moments will be 8 Newtons times D2. Once we have this, we can actually solve for D2. So D2 will be 5 times 0.4 divided by 8. And that will get you 0.25 meters. Therefore, for this uniform beam to be balanced, this D2 has to be 0.25 meters.